Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Bremer. I'm with Mitel and today I'm going to go over the end user training for the ACD users on a 6930 IP phone. A couple things you'll need to remember as we move forward is you'll need to dial an 8 to get an outside line. Uh, you'll no longer need to dial a 1 for long distance or 800 dialing, but if you do press 1 first, it won't hurt anything because uh, I'm in the habit and I do it myself. You will be given an agent ID, but you will not need a login pin. It will ask you for one, but you're just going to press enter when it asks you for one. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you must answer a call that's offered to you as an agent. If you do not answer it, it'll log you off and you'll have to log back onto the phone. So uh, it's important to make yourself busy when you are not taking a call for whatever reason, if you're on break or stepped away from your desk. This is the 6930 IP phone. This is what you should see in front of you uh, when we go live. Um, what I'm going to do is kind of show you around it, make sure you know what all the buttons do. Uh, it kind of moves fairly quickly, uh, but I think you'll get the gist of it. First of all, what you're going to need to do is uh, uh, log into the phone. But first, I want to show you this navigation tool just so you know how it works. Um, it's a little bit of a mystery because you won't use it for inbound calls on a normal basis. It's more for searching in different menus. And uh, the screen is not touch screen. So to maneuver around the screen for things like call history, or if you're trying to look up a contact, you're gonna be using this navigation tool. The way it works is the very center is select and the outside ring allows you to navigate left, right, up or down. When we get to a screen or a function that we'll be using this. I'll kind of go through it with you so you understand. Um, you are a hot desk ACD uh, user and you'll need to log in. A hot desk is just a term that Mitel uses to describe the uh, mobility of an agent uh, able to move in, move to a different building or a home setup and log in and become an agent. Uh, so we call it hot desk ACD. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to hot desk into your phone. And it's important to realize the term hot desk because it says it on the phone. That's why I use it. So here's a phone that's not logged in. It's just sitting there ready for an agent to log on to it. And you'll know that no one's logged on to it because when you're looking at the top of the blue area on the top left hand side, you'll see that the uh, number that's printed there will have a pound as a second uh, digit, as well as it'll say locked in the center of the display and it'll offer you hot desk uh, down below, which means that's your ability to log in. Uh, so these are all indicators to let you know the phone is not usable and it will not receive calls. Um, the only thing you can do with a phone that's locked like this is dial 911 or to dial zero for the operator. You won't be able to make any other outbound or receive any inbound calls. So important to log in. So what we're gonna do first is hot desk into the phone. So we're gonna go ahead and press the hot desk button the soft key right below it. Now this gray area that you see is dynamic. It changes to offer you things that you can do next. So it's not gonna say, once we press hot desk, it's no longer gonna, it's no longer gonna offer that because you've already pressed it. So you'll see as we go along. So I press the hot desk key and it's gonna then ask me to go ahead and enter. It's gonna tell me no log, users are logged in. So I'll hit log in. And then I'll enter my, um, my agent ID. And it's gonna be given to you. I think it starts in it with a seven. So you'll have that agent ID, you'll punch in, and then you'll hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you to enter your pin. Your pin is going to be um, nothing. We don't have a pin. It's just an additional number sometimes people uses, will use. So what you're gonna do is just hit enter instead of putting in the pin. So enter when you put in the uh, agent ID and then enter again without putting a pin in. That'll log you in and it logs you in um, to a screen that looks like this which will have some, now I can make a call and that sort of thing. But I, what's nice about this is it puts you in a make busy status, which is sort of like do not disturb for ACD users. And you may be uh, experiencing the make busy now, I don't know. But um, it's in that make busy automatically. That way, if I wanted to log in a few minutes early before I started my shift, I could log in and not receive calls yet. Um, I could just sit there and finish up, but I'm ready to go. When it comes time for me to get going, 
I'm going to press that Make Busy key and it's going to turn it off and then I'll receive calls. You'll notice down at the bottom, the display has changed. Now it says log out. So that's where you'll log out. And the best practice on this is you log in, in the middle uh, in the morning. You log out when you leave for the day. And in between, you make yourself busy. You'll make yourself busy for breaks. Make yourself busy for lunch. If you step away or if you're on a special project where you're not receiving calls, you make yourself busy. Um, there are a thing called Make Busy Codes. I'm not sure if those have been discovered yet, uh, but if they are, you'll notice when you put yourself in Make Busy, it'll ask for a code. If you press nothing, it just it times out and you don't have to worry about it. But it will allow you a few uh, seconds, 30 seconds or so to punch in a code. So if they provide you either now or up the road with codes, hey, when you go to lunch, use one. When you go to on break, press two, something along those lines, then um, you can punch in that code. So that way they know you're not just sleeping at your desk or whatever. You, they know you're actually uh, on busy work or on your break or at right, lunch or whatever's going on. Okay, so that make busy key is on and off. Uh, everything on the phone is kind of a toggle. You hit it to turn on, you'll hit it again to turn off. And that's definitely the case with make busy. So um, that's how it worked. Now that we're logged in, we're currently in our make busy status. Uh, so we're not receiving calls. We, we can go kind of go over what we see on the display. Um, up top, where that pound was uh, is gone and it just has your agent ID, whatever your login was, seven, whatever, five, two oh one or whatever it is, will be uh, listed up top there. So you'll know it's you. Uh, you'll notice there's a little fella there just letting you know that you are logged in up in that blue area as we head over to the right hand side. The little ricochet is just to let you know you have missed calls. Uh, as an agent, you shouldn't have any missed calls. But of course, it's possible that you stepped away without putting yourself in make busy or something like that. The main thing to, to note on that is if you forget, you know, to make yourself busy, it'll offer a call up to you and it'll ring. Uh, so if you're not there, then there's no one there to answer it. And uh, that's not a good thing. So it goes, it will go ahead then and log you out. It'll assume you're not there, even if you just stepped away for a second and you'll have to log back in again. Um, and then the little boxes that you see in green, those are just indicating that you're connected to the network. And maybe if for some reason you were having a problem with your phone, you could look to that little boxed area and see if you're having a network problem uh, and then report that to IT. You know, hey, my phone has a little red box. I understand that's a network issue. So it's just an indicator for that, okay? Uh, working our way down, if we go below the extension number on the left-hand side, it says my phone. That's actually your inbound line. It just says my phone until a call comes in and then it replaces that information with the caller identification information. It'll also display it in the center and I'll show you that as we go along. Also, you may be in a make busy status, not receiving inbound calls, but you might need to make a call out. Uh, my recommendation is if you're making calls out that you make yourself uh, busy so you don't receive a call to your main line still. It'll offer and then log you out, which you don't want. So what you want to do is uh, really that key's there so you can do things like a conference call um, or that's or place a person on hold and call a supervisor. That's the idea of the out dial. No inbound calls will ring to that. It's just your ability to press that and dial somebody. And if you're you have um, say you have a caller calls in and you need to place them on hold for a second, that gives you the ability to then pick up a second line and call a supervisor or call another department and gather information. So that's what that's there for. It's really not used for you to make an outside call. You're just going to hit eight and dial the phone number to get an outside line. OK, the main thing is you're going to make sure that you're uh, on the correct one. If you're making calls as an agent, calling back people or something like that, you'll want to go ahead and press the my phone key first. So that way it's you get credit for it. It's part of your ACD uh, crediting. OK. Um, you'll notice that this, the gray area below has change as well. It says log out and it also says redial. In the display, it shows you the number that will redial if you press the button. And on the display right now, it lets you know that you ha are in a make busy status. Time and date is always displayed. Uh, so you have that. A lot of blank keys on these phones. Those are available for you to program. I'll show you as we move along on that. And then you can see down below that you have uh, kind of a, it's a little hard to see, but a blue dot and a kind of a clear dot. And we're going to turn off the Make Busy real quick. So I'm going to go ahead up top and just press that key and it's going to turn the Make Busy off. And your display will now look like this uh, where it'll say off. Now I'm ready to receive inbound calls. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, those two little dots down below, uh, they're just letting you know there's multiple pages. I put two on there. You may actually have up to four or five uh, pages. It just depends. Uh, but uh, those are real estate for you to program whatever you would like. If you're dealing with people a lot or you're transferring calls to departments a lot, you can set up keys on your phone uh, to make it a little a step easier so you don't have to remember the extension number. Um, so let's kind of look at that. Those are what you see down below a little better. You can see them a little better now. Um, the way, This is where, again, that navigation key will finally come into play. You'll use your navigation key to go to the uh, right-hand side, and it'll take you to the next bunch of dots. And there may be four or five different dots there, so you might have multiple pages. But just to give you an indicator, those, those pages will currently be clear of any buttons at all. So if you wanted to set one up, it's sort of like your stereo at home. You'll just hold that button down, and uh, after four seconds, it'll pop up and let you program the key to be whatever you would like. So if I hold the button down, it's going to, after four seconds, it's going to pop up a programmable key menu like this, which will give me the ability to uh, set up a name using the keys on the telephone and then a phone number, uh, remembering if it's an outside number to put an eight first and then dial like you would dial if it's a local dial, a local number. If it's a long distance, put in the area code. And then um, you can mark things as private. So if I put in their home, but I don't want anyone walking past my phone, seeing my home phone number, I can mark it as private. There are other features. Most of them don't pertain to you, um, but you can look at them. It's stuff like do not disturb and account codes. That's all ready to roll anyway. So you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, these phones do have the ability to sync up to your cell phone, but it's probably not uh, something you'll be doing. But if you wanted to, you will see a mobile line. And uh, basically it allows, if your cell phone rings, it allows to show up on a key on your telephone. So kind of consolidates all the calls to one place is the idea. Um, so that's, you can see now the navigation key is now coming to play. Uh, so we can scroll over and get things rolling. Here comes an incoming call. What does that look like? Well, here it is. It's going to change where it said my phone up near the top uh, to the, in this case, it's an extension number, but it could be an outside number. It's going to show the number up top next to the, uh, the uh, button. Uh, it'll be blinking a little more dramatic than I'm showing it here, but it'll actually be blinking between blue and white, letting you know that there's a call ringing in. You'll hear an audible ring, of course. And then in the middle of the display, it's going to show you uh, if it's internal, uh, it shows you a little kind of a figure uh, to let you know it's an internal person. It shows you the uh, name of the person and the extension number and it lets you know they're ringing in. If you're wearing a headset, you can use the answer key if you wanted to there to answer the call uh, or pick up the handset, whatever you're doing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that call. And you can see the only thing really offered in that soft key down in the gray area is answer, because that's the only thing I can do when a call is coming in. Redial has gone away because I can't redial a call when another call is coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that call. When I answer it, you'll notice the gray area has changed again. Uh, it's offering me now transfer, add a user. Add a user just means basically conference. You can have up to uh, eight people total, you and seven other people on a conference call. So that's where you'd set something like that up. Or I can end the call. So those are the uh, offerings down at the bottom. Um, you'll notice that it no longer says ringing in, but it has settled in in the center of the display with the caller identification information. And now I'm all live with the person who is called in. In this case, it's Justin. Uh, so Justin and I are now talking. What I want to probably do is uh, I need to transfer Justin to somebody. So the way I'll do that is I'm going to transfer a call. I'm going to use that transfer key, the soft key down there. And when I hit transfer, I'll then dial either the extension number I want to send Justin to, or I'm going to dial an outside number if that's the case, if I need to transfer it to another outside number. I know you guys are used to having um, kind of the full phone number, but you're going to be able to use just the extension numbers if you, uh, the new extension numbers if you have that list. But if you can only remember, oh, I need to transfer this call and I remember the person's phone number, those have been repurposed for the most part and you can just transfer those phone numbers out uh, to, uh, you can always hit transfer uh, eight and dial the phone number associated to it. My recommendation is you kind of get used to the extension numbers to the people you're using so that way you don't have to dial so many digits. Okay, so you'll hit transfer to dial the uh, extension, which we're going to send it to Bob. Uh, Bob's going to grab this call. So I hit transfer, dial Bob's extension. It'll look like this once I dial Bob. And until I hit transfer again or join calls, uh, I could do either one. 
I'm private. Uh, you can see up top, Justin's on hold, his extension's on hold, and Bob's on the line. Um, so I'm, I'll hear Bob's phone ring. He'll pick up. We can have a private conversation. Justin's on the line. Do you want to talk to him? That kind of thing. Okay. And if uh, Bob says, yeah, send him through, then I can go ahead and uh, hit transfer again, and it'll complete it. But let's look before we go to that to the other buttons you see. You can see it's changed the display quite a bit. One thing it says is uh, transfer, join calls. That's setting up a conference. So maybe even if I intended to start off uh, transferring this call to Bob, maybe Bob says, hey, do you mind staying on the line? I want you to hear this. I can then hit join calls and we can all three be joined together on a conference call. And it would say three party conference on the phone. So um, that's that's a nice feature and available to you. Um, in this case, um, we don't want to do that, so we're not going to join the calls. But what other options do we have? We have trade call or back to held. Now, I can tell you back to held is going to cancel the transfer, or even if you're setting up a conference call, it cancels it out. So if you said, if I get a hold of Bob and I said, Bob, Justin's on the phone for you, and Bob said, no, uh, I got to walk into a meeting. Can you tell Justin, call me back in an hour? Sure, I go back. I, I'm done with Bob. I'm not going to ever talk to him again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit back to held and tell Justin, sorry, not available. Can you call back in an hour? Trade call, it means that it won't cancel the transfer, but what it'll do instead is go back to Justin and then I can hit trade call again and go back to Bob. So it's a way to toggle between the two callers. So once I have Bob on the line, I can say, Bob, uh, Justin's on the phone. And maybe Bob says, well, who is uh, who's Justin with? What company? Then I can say, oh, hold on a second. I can hit trade call. Justin, what company are you with? He tells me I hit trade call again, jump back to Bob. Bob, he's with ABC company. And you say, okay, send him through. Then I hit transfer to complete it. So trade just allows me to toggle between the people who are on the line where uh, back to held cancels it and I can start over, you know, transferring him, transferring Justin to somebody else. So kind of interesting and easy. Um, it's one of those things you can get used to pretty quick, uh, but that's some tools available to you when you're doing your transfers. <clears throat> when I'm complete, say uh, Bob and Justin were ready to connect, I'll hit that transfer key and I'm done. Setting up a conference call is really interesting. Um, the thing about setting up a conference call, it's almost identical to doing a transfer. And you saw when we hit transfer and we dialed uh, Bob's extension, that um, it offered me to add a user or connect the calls. So I'm kind of setting up a conference even when I'm trading uh, or even when I'm transferring a call. So let's kind of look at how that works. Here I'm on the same call with Justin, but this time instead of um, my intention is not to transfer the call uh, to Bob, but to add Bob in as a caller. And that would be considered a three-party conference. And what's nice is you can do up to eight people on a conference call, you and seven other people. So you could add quite a few people on. And the same process will apply each time you add somebody in. So I'm going to add Justin um, to Bob and me on a call. So all three of us will be talking. So this time, I'm, I know I'm heading that way. So I hit add user. Now, if I hit transfer, I could still do it. It's going to take me to the same screen. But it's just kind of to keep your head straight on it. So I'm going to hit add user. It's going to take me to the exact same screen and it'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to add user, dial Bob's extension. There's Bob on the phone. Again, I'm talking privately to Bob. Bob, Justin's on the phone. Can you hop on this call with me? If Bob says, yeah, let's, let's do this call together, I would then hit join calls and we'd go all join together. If he said, no, just send Bob to me, I could hit transfer. So regardless of if you hit transfer or if you hit add user, you're gonna end up at this screen where you have the same options. So <laughs> it's just basically to keep you straight on what's going on. And I still have the same options to trade. I can jump back and forth between the callers or I can go back to held and cancel it. Um, so you'll use that back to held if you're, it takes you one step back when you hit back to held. The next step is to cancel the transfer. But if I had four or five people on the conference call, and I hit back to held, it would just take me back to the last group I was with. So that way, if I'm adding in a user, say I have three or four people on the phone and I go to add you into it, but it goes to your voicemail, I'm not adding your voicemail message. I can go back to held and get back to the original group I was with. So it comes into play a little differently depending on if you have more people than one on the phone. When I'm ready to join them together, I'm gonna to hit join calls and we're all connected together. On the display, I didn't have a, a, a um, 
a slide for that, but it will say three party conference on the display. And if you add another person, four party conference and five party conference. What I recommend is if you're ever going to do a conference call, kind of just call some people internally and make sure you kind of have a feel for it. It may be something that you don't do in your department. Fix keys. Let's kind of talk about those. Those are going to be the keys on either side of the um, dial pad. Um, they're, and they're kind of logically set up on the um, when you're facing the phone like we are on the left hand side. Those are more feature uh, oriented keys, things like uh, contacts and uh, your um, uh, call history and settings for the phone and the volume control, that kind of thing, where the things on the right are more call handling. You saw we had transfer and conference and redial. But what's missing is where's the hold key? Uh, where's uh, the mute, where's the speaker key? Well, those are all on that side of the keypad. So it's kind of laid out nicely, and I think it'll, you'll get used to it pretty quick, hopefully. Let's first start on the more feature-driven on the, um, on the left-hand side, and we'll start at the top and work our way down. So the first one is your contacts key. What this is is the ability to not only set up personal contacts uh, for yourself, so people that you dial a lot, but it'll also let you go to the corporate directory and use a search by last name to find people you might want to talk to. Now, departments may have other resources for this. This may not be your resource necessarily. I know that some people might have a, like a click to dial feature where they click on a screen and contact the person. But this is still there available to you even if you're using something else. And even with the ACD users, you do have software in a lot of cases where you can log on to the phone and that sort of thing. But you have the physical phone now and you know how to log on to that too. So this is the um, phone part of the deal if you ever need to turn to the phone say your computer isn't coming up and you need to log in and log out even if you have software this functionality will work okay but first of all we're talking about contacts so uh, in contacts you have several contacts you have personal contacts and you have corporate contacts uh, personal contacts are going to be contacts that you create you can see down the soft key down there it says add new and i could put in a name Similar to how I do the buttons, you know, if I don't hold the button down in this case, I hit new and it'll let me put in a name. It'll let me put in the phone number. If there's multiple phone numbers, I can put in multiple phone numbers. So it's going to allow me to do that. Um, so those are going to be ones I can scroll through and I, all I have to use my navigation key to kind of scroll over, scroll down or up and I can uh, kind of uh, find the person I want to dial. If I hit the center of the key, it'll dial it or you can see dial is offered as a, a contact. The other thing you have is corporate contacts, and that's going to be where you search. Uh, you'll notice when you go to corporate contacts, it's blank, because you have to type in at least a letter of the last name. Uh, obviously, the more letters you type in, the closer you're going to get. It's a big, huge amount of phones out there with a lot of names. So if you're looking for somebody, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure you put in at least as much of the last name as possible so you can find the right person. But what it will do is if you even put in a C, it'll bring up all the C's alphabetically, and you can use the navigation key to scroll down that list and pick the person you want to call. Okay. And there's an example of me scrolling over. I'm, ty I'm typing in the last name, and I'm going to hit search, and it'll bring up all the matches to that search. Okay, and then you have a backspace and a reset and then, of course, close. So so that's your contacts and kind of play with that. You can find yourself out there, I'm sure, or whatever. Uh, you should be able to find your name. It'll be by your agent ID and people can find you and call you. Um, if I keep scrolling over, so if I go to a contact and I keep scrolling over, I can then look at other numbers or add other numbers into those contacts and call them. So if I am in my personal contacts and I've added your home phone and your mobile phone, I can scroll over and pick the one I want to call. So that's just if you continuously go over to the right. All right. So here's our call history. This will allow you to see all your call history and you can see that the latest one is at the top and the ones before that they kind of start at the top work their way down in time sequence um, you have all calls you'll have missed calls outgoing calls or receive calls so you can separate it out if you want to just see everything that you were doing today um, you can just see everything but if you want to go down a little bit you can just see the ones you missed or the ones that you dialed or the ones you received okay and um you'll only get a missed call as if you get logged out so that'll show as a missed call on you 
And you can see if I scroll over using the navigation key, I can add those out of my call history to my personal contacts. Uh, so I can add that contact in. So if I someone called me and I said, boy, I better keep that number in my personal contacts call, because I call them a lot, I can just scroll to my call history and select them using their caller. It would already input the caller ID and phone number. And then I can go in and edit it, modify it to maybe put in their cell number. Or if the name is a company name, I can put in the person uh, I'm really wanting to talk to. You know, So you can modify it from there. So it's kind of nice out of the call history. Here's your voicemail key. Um, most ACD agents don't have voicemail because why? You know, they're not really receiving calls. It's ringing to the group. Uh, if you do, that's a button you'll press to get to your voicemail. This is your settings key. This is where all the settings are of the phone. A couple settings that I've made special note of um, to kind of save your sanity, I guess. Um, when you press that key, it's going to take you to a display like this, and you can use your navigation key again to scroll back or forth or whatever. Uh, one of the things you're going to look out for is a little horn there. It's going to say audio once you uh, highlight it, and the audio is the ringer. And you may have noticed if you have the phone already, and if you haven't, you will find out that the ringer is really sing-songy, uh, and it's sort of like a cell phone type ringer. I'm not a big fan myself of that kind of ring. So I, I immediately went in and changed the audio setting for that. Pretty easy to do. Um, if I'm on this audio, I have kind of two selections. I can scroll down, use my navigation key, and I can change the way my phone rings from being a speakerphone to a headset. So if you're wearing a headset that isn't ours, you can make it so when you hit the speaker key, it answers on the, hand, on the uh, headset instead of the speaker, which is a nice feature. Um, the other thing we can do is um, we can just select it by hitting the center of the key or hitting select and it'll bring us up to the ringers. So you have two kinds of rings, internal and external. So you can tell if someone internally is calling you or if someone from the outside is calling you. And all you have to do is use your navigation key to scroll over and as you scroll down, Towards the bottom, if you prefer a more classic ringtone, then uh, get to the bottom and you'll find that there's uh, a few selections of that. Otherwise, it's the little song ones. Um, so you you can do set up both for internal calls and external outside callers calling in. And then you hit save when you found the ringer of your choice. And as you scroll down, it'll play each ringer. So you'll have an idea of what that is. Okay. Audio, so there's where I was talking about. If I go down, I can choose, instead of speaker, I can go up and, and uh, select headset. Uh, so if I'm using the headset port on the phone uh, for my wired headset, um, then I can select that path. If you're using a lifter kit on your headset, uh, then you don't need to worry about that. It'll kind of, the, the device itself does the work. But if you're just plugging in a headset into this, a wired headset or, or something along those lines, then um, you can change the audio, okay? Other settings that you might be interested in is the display. Uh, it's a personal problem for me. It may not matter to you, but uh, the the phone after five minutes dims uh, really darkly and you've got to kind of got to press a button to wake it up or a call comes in, it'll wake it up. So um, I don't like that personally. I like it to be displayed so I can just hit a button real quick. Um, so what I do sometimes, what I would do if I was on site helping you with your phones is I'd probably turn this up for you. And when you choose display, you, this is the screensaver that pops up, but it's really dimly lit and it's, you don't really need a screensaver anymore, but, uh, that's what pops up on your display. And that little time there just kind of moves around this display, sort of like old time, uh, PCs used to do. But when you uh, choose to display, you can see that, uh, there's levels up to level five of, uh, brightness. And uh, if you want, you can change your brightness on your display. That would just change it while your phone is good to go. So if it seems a little too dim, um, then you can adjust that brightness level of how it is when you're using the phone. Uh, you also have the screensaver setting. Um, what you can do is you can do 120 um, minutes of uh, to before the screensaver comes off. You can't turn it off all the way, but I believe 120 is what you can go up to. Um, recently, it moved up from 59 um, minutes to 120. So right now it's at five minutes. So after five minutes, you can see it dims to a one, which is almost like it's off. Your display turns off. And I guess that's a good energy saver. But if you don't want it to happen after five minutes of not getting a call, you know, change either the timer or you can change both the timer and the dimmer level. So after five minutes, it will not dim as much. 
you know, whatever you like. But those are where those settings are. When you have them set the way you want, you hit save. So those are just a couple of those, uh, those features under that gear button. The next one down is your volume control. It, select, it uh, controls each piece of volume separately. If you're wearing a headset, you can adjust your headset volume. If you're on speaker, you adjust your speaker volume. When the phone is ringing before picking it up, you can enjoy, adjust the ringer volume uh, with this key. Uh, so all the, all the different uh, volumes are set up uh, through that button. Okay. Now, next is the opposite side. We're looking now over to the right-hand side, starting at the top and working our way down. And like I was saying earlier, this is more call handling than it is um, features. So first one is, there's a feature in there, but mostly call handling. First one is your hang up key. So you can see that um, the very bottom is your speaker and the very top is hang up. So if you're using that audio path and you're using wired headset into your phone, you can hit hang up or hit the, the speaker key to answer and hang up the, to uh, hang up the phone. So that's what that's for. This is a redial list. The redial list will give you, uh, you saw on this display earlier, it said redial and it redialed the last number. This takes you to the uh, call history list. It takes you to the outgoing call history. So if you wanted to dial the second number you dialed, you know, two calls ago, you could go to that. And that's all that is. It takes you to the outgoing list. So you don't have to hit history and scroll down and all that. It takes you right to the list. Makes it a little easier. This is your hold key. Uh, it's like a little pause key, two lines there. Uh, the pause key will allow you to put your call on hold. Uh, when you put, press that, it's going to look like this on your display. So it'll be blinking but and give you an idea of that it's on hold. But that's what it looks like. A little pause will kind of go between white and yellow there uh, to let you know the call's on hold. To recover the call, you just hit the key next to it and you'll recover that held key, hold, held call. This is your mute key, mutes the handset, or if you're wearing a headset, it'll mute that or the speaker. So it, it's lit when you're muted. If you need to cough, sneeze, or say jerk, or whatever you need to do, make sure it's muted and lit. And you should be good to roll there. And then the next key down is your speaker or headset. Now, if you change that audio path in the settings, when you hit that key, it's gonna come live on your headset. So um, there is the ability on these phones to auto answer. I don't know if anyone's gonna be using that. Then you don't have to worry about it. It just rings in your ear, comes live. But um, it, depending on the headset that you're using, um, if you're using a wired one that plugs into the phone or that sort of thing, then you can just hit this key and answer on your headset. A lot of agents use headsets, so I'm, I'm assuming, but you have your, your handset. If you hit the, if you aren't using a headset, then it comes onto the speaker key. 